Cool. Hey friends, welcome to Make Anything. It's Devin here, and as you can see, I've been printing some face shields. In case you're out of the loop, the 3D printing community has stepped up big time to print these face shields for frontline workers battling COVID-19. So hospitals have been having supply shortages, and basically as soon as they saw the opportunity, a lot of big players in the 3D printing space stood up to the plate and uh, started making all of these face shields to donate to all those hospitals and all those frontline workers in need. And I think that's awesome. This version here was designed by 3D Verkstan in Sweden. And uh, you may have seen them on 3D Printing Nerd's recent video where he printed some of these and had a nurse friend test them out and approve of them. So I started printing them myself. I really like this design because it doesn't require any elastic to stay on my head. It's just the tension of the 3D print, and it was designed to use standard A4 transparency sheets, which is really cool. Although I didn't have any when I was making this one, so that's why I have this yellow film gel. That's all I had around. Although, I don't know, maybe I'm onto something. It's a bit fashionable, you know? Just because we're in a global pandemic doesn't mean we can't look good. Or maybe it's a way of communicating your mood to people while respecting socially acceptable boundaries, like, Oh, I'm so angry! 2020 was supposed to be my year! 2020 was supposed to be my year! Anyways, I think these face shields are fantastic, whether you print the Prusa version, or this 3D Verkstan version, or another approved version. I would suggest checking out matterhackers.com slash COVID-19, they're working to connect hospitals and volunteers in an orderly fashion, so uh, definitely go check them out if you're interested in helping out. So I am printing out a ton of face shields and I'm excited to donate those to the hospitals, but I'm a designer, so I wanted to help out using my design skills, you know? Scratch that design itch. And then I had a real itch. And it hit me. Yes, I call this the scritcher, and it's a print-in-place face scratcher. A little tiny hand with a switch here at the bottom that lets you get that little scritching action. So you can uh, reach under your mask, engage the scritcher, and scritch away. Ooh. Oh yeah. I'll be printing my scritchers on the Artillery Sidewinder X1 3D printer, which has definitely become one of my go-to 3D printers lately. And I'll go ahead and load up some of this tan PLA filament by Filamentum as it matches my pasty complexion quite well. So we're off to the races and you can start to see the beginnings of the scritcher. And the real cool thing about this design is that it's entirely print in place. So all the little hinges and mechanisms that make this thing work are all printed in one go. And once it's cooled down, it's ready to go right off of the build plate. How cool is that? Here's that newborn scritcher in action. And as you can see, the way it works is it's got this slider at the handle, which creates tension on this thin piece of plastic on the back that pushes the fingers forward with this nice spring-like action. And it's pretty amazing how well it works, even with this PLA plastic, which is usually quite brittle, but this just goes to show that with the right design, you can make materials do some pretty impressive things. Ah yes, very impressive. Once again, face scratches are within reach, and we finally have a use for those little pockets on our jeans. That said, let's continue to practice good hygiene. Scratchers! That's my contribution. You might recall a couple months ago, I made a video where I showed you how to use custom G-code to automatically eject prints so that you can almost fully automate your 3D printer. Well, this week I saw that technique put to great use by Instagram user Just3dPrintit, who, as you can see here, is ejecting face shields using that same technique. You can see that little 3D printed attachment on the head of the printer to help knock off these very shallow prints. And it also looks like he had the G-code waiting after the print finished to let the bed cool down a bit so the prints come off more easily. 
Anyways, that post pretty much inspired me to make this video so that I can share yet another way to efficiently print face masks, and that is by stacking prints vertically. Yes, that's right, we are working with a 3D printer after all, so besides arranging parts on the bed, you may be able to actually stack prints on top of each other, depending on the print. And in this case, with this face shield, it's the perfect model for this technique. So let me show you how we can actually stack face shields and print several all in one go. So we're gonna go ahead and do our stacking in Microsoft's 3D Builder, which is a nice free Windows program. We'll drag in that STL file that we downloaded from the 3D Verkstown website. Let's accept that. And if we click on the model here and go to the scaling tool right here, we can actually get the dimensions of our model and we're most interested in the Z dimension, which as you can see here, is a nice clean five millimeter height. That's gonna make our job a bit easier. Let's switch to the move tool here and you'll notice that the Z value has changed to 2.5 and that's because Microsoft Builder places the origin in the middle of the part. So 2.5 is half of five. So we need to figure out how to change this Z height in order to create the perfect gap between parts. And to do that, I'll first copy this part with a control C. And if I just hit control V now, you'll see that Microsoft Builder places the model way over here on the left because it doesn't wanna overlap the models. So what we wanna do is first move this part out of the way and then we can paste a second shield underneath. So based on how this works, if we change this Z value to 7.5, that would create this stack of two prints with no gap in between the parts. And if we do that, well, we're not gonna have any gap when we're slicing the prints and those parts would just merge together and become one solid block. That's definitely not our goal. For this technique, we actually want an air gap between our prints. And since we're printing at a 0.19 millimeter layer height, I wanna choose a larger gap than that. So we're gonna go with 0.3 millimeters. And to do this, I'll bust out my calculator app and do this basic formula, which is to take this Z position, multiply that by three, which gives us the value for a perfect stack, but then we'll add in 0.3 to add that 0.3 millimeter gap into this equation. So we'll hit equal and that gives us 7.8. So now we can go ahead and change this Z position to 7.8. We'll paste another face mask into the original position, and now you can see we've got that really small little gap between our two prints. And that is in fact a 0.3 millimeter gap. So now we've got two stacked, and we can basically just repeat this process of doubling the number of face masks. So I'll select both of these and group them, and that gives us a new Z value here, 5.15. So once again, I'll plug that into the calculator, I'll multiply it by three and I'll add that 0.3 millimeter gap. So now we get 15.75. We'll go ahead, copy our two masks, change this to 15.75 and then paste those two masks back underneath. We'll group it again and just keep repeating that process with the new values that it gives us. 10.45, multiply by three and add 0.3. That gives us 31.65. I'll repeat that until we have 16 face masks stacked, each with a 0.3 millimeter gap, and then I can hit save and export all of these as a single STL file, which I can then bring into my slicer. So this is Z Suite. It's a slicer specifically for my Zortrax printer. So you probably won't be using this slicer, but the general principles are more or less the same. Many of the settings that I'd like to change are locked in this slicer, but I'm basically just printing these solid at that 0.19 millimeter layer height with no support material on, which means that those gaps that we designed will be included in our G code. If I scroll through the layers here very carefully, it seems like there's actually a two layer gap between the parts and that is perfect. So let's go ahead and start printing. Here you can see the beginning of the fifth face shield with the printer bridging over this gap, and it looks like it's doing a really nice job of it. There's a bit of stringiness here and there, but that's pretty common with PETG. 
As you can see, I'm printing with a raft, which is something I almost always avoid, but it's pretty unavoidable with this M300 printer. It's just kind of how it works. And also the printer's not printing too, too fast. I'm playing it kind of safe for now. I'm just trying to get this machine to print masks on its own without much intervention, rather than going for a high speed record. Here's a cool shot of the first layer of another face shield being printed. And you can see how it's kind of loosely printing on top of the last layer because of that air gap that is programmed into the slicer. Here's what I came back to the next day. A nice stack of 16 face shields. And here you can see me prying off the first shield from the rest of the stack. It came off quite nicely, so that was promising. And there we go. It's a bit hairy, but definitely functional. So here we go, 16 PETG face shields, all printed in one go and stacked on top of each other with that 0.3 millimeter gap. And it looks absolutely perfect. So now I'm just gonna take a spatula here and gently wiggle them apart. I just gotta find a nice corner where I can wedge this in. Well, the first one came off perfectly. And the second one, this is a total disaster. As I continued wedging my spatula between the face masks, I found that a lot of them were ending up like this. So... Hey there, future Devin here. Well, not your future, but his future. And boy, is past Devin looking silly right now. But don't worry, I'll explain everything. You see, back when Devin was stacking those layers, he thought a 0.3 millimeter gap would be a nice, simple number to get the job done. It's bigger than the 0.19 millimeter layer height, so surely there will be a gap between every print. But that's not how it works. The thing is, when that file gets brought into the slicer, it has to convert everything into perfect 0.19 millimeter layer heights. So when it sees that 0.3 millimeter gap, Sometimes the bottom layer will round up or down, the top layer will round up or down, and that means you can end up with anything from a two layer gap to no gap at all. It's a total mess. That's what happened to this poor sucker. But don't worry, the solution is pretty simple. All we have to do is make the gap an exact multiple of the layer height. So in this case, we want to have a gap of two layers. Each layer is 0.19 millimeters, so we multiply that by two. 0.38 millimeter layer gap. So that's gonna be our new gap between layers. We'll go back into 3D Builder, rebuild our part with that perfect gap. And then when we bring it into the slicer, it'll have a nice two layer gap between every print, every time. That's what I did this time. And it works so much better. I can actually separate the prints without even having to use a spatula. They just pull right apart. That's how it's meant to be. All right, see you guys. So, you definitely want to make sure you get your settings right and your spacing right when you're stacking prints, especially if you're printing with a very brittle filament like PETG. Nevertheless, once I got my settings dialed in for this particular file, I was able to stack masks quite successfully, and the quality of the bottom layers looks pretty similar to if I just printed this with a raft. So let's go ahead and finish up one of these face masks. Besides the printed part, we also need the transparent face shield. And for that, I have these transparency films which were donated by the local school district. Now I just need a standard three hole punch. Then I'll punch three holes, shift the sheet over a specified amount, and then punch three more holes. There we go. We've got six holes now, which we can pop right onto these little nubs. And they basically just hook on there and hold in place by tension. Like I said, it's a really nice, well done design. Ideally, I'd be using A4 size sheets, which go around the ears a little bit further. However, in this emergency situation, this will do the job. So I'm just gonna go ahead, take my scissors and round off these corners to prevent any accidental pokes. And we've got ourselves an emergency face shield. Quite nice. I do wanna share one more example of stacked prints because most people would say that you can only stack completely flat prints, but I actually managed to stack a more complicated print, somewhat, my ambiguous cylinder. 
This time around, I'm gonna show you how I do my stacking directly in Simplify 3D. So we'll start by bringing in our ambiguous cylinder. We'll copy and paste it. And with both these models selected, we'll go up here and select align selected model origins, which will bring those two models right into the same position. Now let's select both of these and offset them in the Z direction, just to bring it off the build plate a bit and to make it a nice even number. There we go. Now we've got a little gap to build up our supports. Now I'll select just my second ambiguous cylinder and I'll increase the Z offset until hopefully those two parts look perfectly stacked. There we go. Looks like I designed this with some nice clean numbers as well. We'll just increase this by 0.4 to give us a 0.4 millimeter gap between the parts. I am printing this at 0.12 millimeter layer heights, but because this is a curved surface between the parts, my little uh, formula of doubling the layer height doesn't work exactly the same way with this print. Anyways, let's paste in a third cylinder. Once again, we'll align it to the model origin, and then I'll go ahead and just take that one and offset it in the Z direction as well. Now this time it won't align perfectly because we already have that 0.4 millimeter gap. So I'll lower this until it's barely overlapping by 0.4 millimeters, and then I'll increase it by 0.8, leaving us with that 0.4 millimeter gap. There, so we've got our stacked cylinders, and I'll actually be printing this using two separate processes because we only want support material on our first ambiguous cylinder. Like I said, we've got a 0.12 millimeter layer height here and everything else is generally standard. The second profile is the same just without that support material turned on and so we'll make sure that that is applied to the other two cylinders. This is gonna prevent support material from automatically filling in those gaps between the parts. Now with just the bottom cylinder selected, I'll open up our custom support tool. I'll make the pillar resolution one millimeter and generate automatic supports. So there we go, we've got the supports we need underneath our first cylinder. Though you can see there's those two little empty patches. So let's go ahead and change the resolution to four millimeters and just add in two little custom supports right there and there. Now I can select both of these processes to print both of them together and we have our completed G-code file. The colors here just indicate the two different processes we used. We can change that coloring here, but most importantly, let's take a look at that gap between the layers. Once again, we'll just slowly scroll through and take a look at those layer gaps. And once again, it looks like we've got that ideal two layer air gap between the prints. So I think that'll work out great. Well, actually, I know it'll print out great because this is my third attempt. As you can see, the print completed with no problems. Those air gaps didn't cause any catastrophic disasters. In fact, the cylinders look great. They separate surprisingly easily. And even more surprising, if you look at the quality of the layers, I think the bottom surface of the stacked cylinder actually looks better than the regular print. So now I could theoretically print a bunch of these tall stacks of ambiguous cylinders, then have the printer push all of those prints off the build plate and just be like mass producing these things. Although I don't need that many quite yet. All right, well, I hope you learned something from this video. I'll put links in the description uh, so you can go ahead and print out some face shields for yourself. You can print out some little scritchers to scratch your face. Make sure to wash your hands and your little hands. If you have any thoughts, suggestions, and I could probably use some advice from this video, is there some kind of formula you have for more effectively stacking prints? Let me know. But that's it for today's video. So until then, I'm Devin, this is Make Anything, and as always, stay inspired.